Nintendo Entertainment System. It may be the most addictive toy in history, and it's definitely the hottest thing this Christmas. Nintendo video games. There's something about the NES that resonates with everyone who pressed that power button. The commercials, the unforgettable design, the magazines, cartoons, and merchandise, the games, the people we shared it with, or maybe just the way it dominated the 80s and early 90s. By the end of this year, one out of every three homes in America will have Nintendo. The Nintendo Entertainment System calls us back to simpler times, back to when cartoons were wholesome and the toys were the best they've ever been. And somehow, the mere mention of the NES reminds us of rushing home to play after school, sleepovers with friends, and Christmases spent with our families around the tree. Nintendo allowed us to explore alien planets, adventure in magical lands, and use the superhuman powers kids only dreamt of. It's been decades since Nintendo released its revolutionary system, flooding our stores and imaginations with its games and characters but the memories remain. Remember the first time you saw a Nintendo game being played? Whether on a commercial, at a store, or at a friend's house up the street, we all remember that first time. The NES was such a vast improvement over earlier systems, and it only took a moment for you to know that this was something special. Remember the day you got your NES? For me, like many others, it was a Christmas present for my grandparents, and it set the tone for many childhood Christmases to come. Your dad set up the system, you turned on the tube to that familiar static, pressed the power button, and suddenly you were lost in the Mushroom Kingdom. There was electricity in the air, and it seemed like every kid was talking about it. Remember when grown-ups kept calling your new Nintendo Atari? Atari had been so popular that its name was synonymous with video games. But that was about to change, and soon Nintendo would take the mantle. Remember seeing that unique design with the little door on the front of the system? It was quirky and unlike any other system ever. After the video game crash, parents were leery of video games, so to set itself apart, Nintendo branded their console an entertainment system and modeled its design after other entertainment devices of the time. Top-loading VCRs. Remember those? Remember Rob the Robot? He looked so futuristic and cool and left us wondering exactly what our little robotic operating buddy could do. I want to be your buddy. As it turns out, not much. But still, no other console came with a robot friend. I am the Sega Sentinel. Sega does what Nintendo Remember Nintendo's famous slogan? Now you are playing with power. They were right. It did feel like playing with power. Never before could you so fully immerse yourself in imaginary worlds. With a controller in hand, we could travel to the impossible subcon, blast aliens in space beat up bullies in the streets, fly through the air, or fight the heavyweight champion of the world. And do you remember actually holding the controller for the first time? It had no joystick and an extra button. It was odd at first, but we quickly adjusted and became so immersed in the experience that we forgot we were even holding the controller at all. Remember all those other weird controllers with sliding circles, strange shapes and sizes, and sometimes shells to put them in? They were unusual and often useless, but it was Nintendo stuff, and at the time, anything Nintendo was cool. But remember the NES Advantage? Probably the coolest controller ever. With that sweet arcade joystick and oversized buttons, dialable levels of turbo, and slow motion. No other controller even came close. And remember the light gun? Nintendo had perfected light gun technology in their laser clay shooting ranges, and us 80s kids loved toy guns. But shooting the screen gave you a completely new way to play games. Killing 8-bit ducks was fun enough, but your fantasy was shooting the dog that mocked you. And who can forget the power glove? It was the coolest looking accessory for the system, and while the technology behind it was promising, 
it was also one of the least useful. I love the power glove. It's so bad. Remember the power pad? Now you're playing with power, body power. Nintendo's grand plan to trick kids into exercising? It was bulky and weird and not that many games supported it. And whether you had it or not, it's hard to forget. Remember playing games from the carpet? You had to sit on the floor because the cord couldn't reach the couch. But it didn't matter much because most TVs of the time were right there on the carpet with you. As amazing as the system was, you didn't get it just to stare at it. You got it for the games. Remember all those ads for games in gaming magazines? Staring at them and wishing you had as many games as this kid, or this kid, or that kid, or that your room could look like this? Remember drooling over the Sears Christmas wish book and circling all the games you wanted? Gather crystals to stop warlords? Huh. Then remember when Christmas morning finally came? The joy you felt at seeing game-shaped boxes tucked under the tree. You played those games so much through Christmas break that some of your favorite Christmas memories are Nintendo memories. Remember how video games used to just hang openly on tabs at the store? The earliest games weren't even shrink-wrapped. They had a built-in hang tab and a sticker seal. And who can forget Toys R Us? We've got the Nintendo Action Set, including the control deck with double game pack and zapper light gun for just $99.99 at Toys R Us. And we have all of the hottest game cartridges at great everyday low prices. At Toys R Us, the video game aisle included only pictures of the box art with pouches of slips below them. You had to take the slip to the counter, receive your game, and get the ticket stamped receive. I think every kid caught a glimpse into that majestic back room where the games were piled high, seemingly to the heavens. Remember opening a new game and throwing away the box? I mean, who saves the packaging? Remember the dust covers? Third-party dust covers were solid black, but games from Nintendo made sure you knew it, with Nintendo emblazoned in red across the side. Some kids used them to protect the label, some to display the label, and some just threw them in the trash with the box. They were intended to keep out dust, but my favorite perk is that they kept maps and manuals with the game. And speaking of manuals, I'm sure you have a lot of memories with those. They told us the story, displayed power-ups and enemies, taught us the controls, and gave us artwork to help us imagine what the sprites were supposed to look like. In many cases, reading booklets was necessary for playing the game, and in some cases, it was more fun. Remember the posters and inserts that came with games? You'd contemplate subscribing to Nintendo Power, study the maps in great detail, and the posters were often just ads for other games, but we proudly hung them on our walls and dreamed about which game we'd get next. Remember the styrofoam blocks at the bottom of the box? They not only protected the game during shipping, they also gave more real estate for cover art and game descriptions. And at the time, this was often your only consideration when debating a purchase. And remember storing all your games in a shoebox or stacking them by the TV? Because back then, you didn't have that many to store. Some of us had a few plastic cases or racks for display, but most of us just used what we had. There are a lot of memories daydreaming over the screenshots and artwork for these games, but nothing compared to actually playing them. Remember Nintendo's first wave of games? The black box games? Atari graphics never matched the beautiful box art and consumers were often left feeling betrayed. But these black box titles were marketed to display the actual graphics found in the game, and their design is permanently etched in our memories. These early games had a delightful simplicity. We loved them and had no idea that NES games could possibly get better. But remember when they did? When they went from single screen affairs to full blown adventures full of secrets, exploration, and stories? This is when we discovered classics like Ninja Gaiden, Contra, Mega Man, and many, many more. 
Remember games with names you couldn't pronounce? Asylumax. And others you thought you could pronounce only to find out years later how wrong you were? Ninja Gaiden. Gaiden. And some had titles you couldn't even read. Sekirkers deep malfunction. Malfunction. Remember when the words in games were just off? You didn't know why, you just knew something was weird. Remember learning to like bad games because they were your only games? Maybe you were lured in by deceptively good box art, or maybe you were gifted something by your uninformed, well-meaning grandparents. Some games were just bad, but you played them anyway until you liked them, and usually, somewhere deep, there was something to like about it. Usually. And who doesn't remember the amazing games? These are the games that allowed you to have adventures in worlds you could never visit and assume abilities you could never actually possess. These are the games that had you daydreaming in school and racing home to play again. Remember video game magazines? At the time, there were only a few ways to learn about upcoming games. Commercials, that kid on the bus who swore he had inside information, or having a magazine subscription and nothing satisfied your Nintendo cravings like the magazine from Nintendo itself. It started with Nintendo Fun Club News and evolved into the mighty Nintendo Power. The magazine was packed with strategies, codes, tips, strange drawings, high scores, and drool-inducing articles about everything coming to the NES. And remember Howard Phillips? He was the face of Nintendo, the Game Master, and the bow-tie grown-up in the Howard and Nestor comic strip. He was a trusted face, and even though he was a grown-up, he was one of us. He was also the gatekeeper for many games coming to the United States, almost single-handedly deciding if a game would receive the coveted Nintendo seal of quality. Remember that? because some games didn't have it, and some games didn't deserve it. Remember copying passwords? The idea of keeping your progress in a game was revolutionary and allowed developers to break free of that arcade simplicity and make increasingly rich gameplay experiences. But some games had ridiculously long passwords. Others had weird shapes, symbols, and colored orbs, Copying those passwords was extra tricky. You had to be so precise, and at times, artistic. And remember copying passwords incorrectly? You would always confuse O and zero, or a lowercase l and a one. Why did they make it so complicated? Some kids could barely write their own names. Thankfully, some companies had the wherewithal to leave out confusing letters, or to use a diagonal line in the zero. And remember battery save games? While this solved many of the problems with passwords, you could no longer share them with friends. These games had a sticker on the back warning you to hold the reset button as you turned off the power. Failure to do so may result in the loss of your stored game information. You would always wonder, what if I don't? But a lot of kids were too afraid to find out. Remember being frustrated when a game didn't have a password or save feature? You'd have to play the whole thing in one sitting or do the unthinkable and leave the system on all night long. Remember the blinking power light and flashing screen? You'd take the game out, you'd put it back in, you'd jiggle it, press it to one side, take it out, reinsert it again, and if all else failed, remember blowing in games? There was the puff, the sweep, the overkill which was more like a desperate cry of pure frustration. And the French blow. Every kid had their own technique, but it would almost invariably work and your game would begin. Nintendo, meanwhile, had another solution. Remember these? NES cleaning kits included a strange cartridge with a handle and a little felt pad. Treated with a little solution, it could be used to polish the contacts and scrub away dust, moisture, soda, spider webs, or whatever other disgusting debris your games accrued. Remember the Game Genie? If games were too challenging, or if kids just wanted the freedom of breaking the rules, they could use the Game Genie to manipulate the game, 
adding extra lives, invincibility, and all kinds of crazy effects. As fun as all these games were, our favorite Nintendo memories aren't necessarily the games, but the people we shared them with. Remember playing games all night at sleepovers? Their house smelled weird, the decorations were weird, the food was weird, but Nintendo was our common ground. We played all night, taking turns, fighting over controllers, playing two-player games into the early hours of morning, all the while hoping your friend wouldn't gum up your controller with cheese dust fingers. And remember seeing some random Nintendo stuff at their house you'd never seen before? Because there was always that kid who seemed to have it all. The success of games like Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda had brought Nintendo into our lives in nearly every possible way. Toys, watches and clocks, school supplies and drinking glasses. Nintendo was even in our cereal bowls. Nintendo cereal system is a super part of this nutritious breakfast. Nintendo. Two cereals in one. Wow! Remember the games you played at a friend's house but didn't actually have? Chris had Russian Attack, Troy had Ring King, and Jason seemed to have everything. Remember borrowing games? This greatly expanded the number of titles you got to play, and it usually turned out all right. But occasionally someone would borrow a game right into their collection. And sometimes, that someone was you. And remember permanently trading games with friends? Your allowance could only go so far, so trading games was the next best way to get something new. And sometimes you got some crazy good deals. Remember renting games for the weekend? While your parents were searching for Romancing the Stone, whatever that was, you were preoccupied in the game aisle. Bringing that game home was pure joy until you tried to play it and realized that without the manual you were completely baffled. As evidence of just how popular Nintendo was, you could find rentable games at nearly every neighborhood video store, and even the grocery store. Remember having to take turns with brothers, sisters, or friends whenever someone died or beat the level? But dying meant shorter turns, so you secretly hoped they'd fall into a pit. Remember all those codes and secrets? You felt like you were in an exclusive club because you memorized the code for Mike Tyson. And we all have those playground memories talking about accessing secret areas, finding hidden mushrooms, or entering button combinations to unlock something special. The most famous is the Konami code, but there were many codes for many games, and some were completely ridiculous. Push up, down, A, A, B, left, right, A, B, up, A, down, right, right, left, B, up, left, A, right, B, left, right, A, left, up, A, down, A, right, left, A, start. Remember game counselors and the power line? To get the magical sword, what you need is 12 heart containers. Towards the end of the stage, there's going to be a large staircase. Most kids would get stuck in a game from time to time, and for most of the early classics, you could explore the official player's guide to figure out what to do. But if you were really stuck, you could call the power line. For only a kidney a minute and a stern talking to from your parents once the bill came in, helpless kids could ask professional Nintendo nerds what to do next. Continue to the right until you get to this real big drop-off. That's when you want to use the umbrella. Looks like a, sort of like a balloon with a plus sign on it. Well, then you have to go and fight Astos. Remember video game clubs? The NES was so popular that kids across the world would band together and create Nintendo-themed clubs. They would borrow and trade games, sometimes pool their money to buy shared games, create ranks depending on each member's skill or the number of games they'd completed. This is our best player, Daniel Megatron Lily. He has won Metroid seven times, Rygar, Kid Icarus, Double Dragon, Kung Fu, and Super Mario Brothers. In our club, he has reached the rank of Supreme Video Grid Warrior. We are proud. Signed, Brian Goatee Shazbot Video Grid Warrior First Class Bionic Freakbots Video Club. Some of these clubs had crazy names, but all of them have cherished memories. Sharing Nintendo with those around us was one thing, but seeing Nintendo beyond our friends and family proved that we were part of something much bigger.
Remember the Super Mario Brothers Super Show? With live action bits, special guest stars, a very memorable song and dance. Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. And of course, the adventures in Mushroom Land. It was crazy at times, but super fun, and a perfect time to have a bowl of Nintendo cereal. Just like that! And remember the Zelda episodes on Fridays? Who can forget? Excuse me, princess. Well, excuse me again, princess. Hey, excuse me, prin... Maybe it wasn't exactly the Link and Zelda we imagined. Hey, for you, Zelda, anything. But it didn't matter. It was Nintendo. Remember the other video game cartoon, Captain N the Game Master? I think every kid daydreamed about getting pulled into the game and having adventures just like Kevin did. And even though King Hippo was blue for some reason, Mega Man sounded like an idiot, That's on Excalibur, the land of wizards and warriors! And Mother Brain was endlessly disturbing. <laughs> We loved it. Remember when you saw kids on sitcoms playing NES? Wait a minute, my controller's not working. <laughs> and do you remember watching kids win games on game shows? All these flower petals look the same. Pull the right one and you both could win Nintendo's most challenging system ever. I also remember learning what jealousy meant. What will the future bring from Nintendo? Remember those early Nintendo commercials? It's survival or destruction. To battle or die. Metroid only from Nintendo. They were exciting, powerful, and made us feel not only like the future had arrived, but that we were part of it. Remember the Zelda commercial? Zelda! Which way? Zelda! 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 The Legend of Zelda. And yet, somehow, you still bought the game because the golden cartridge in that little window promised something truly special. And remember the later commercials? Some were epic. Super Mario is back. He's blasting through worlds where no one has ever been. It's Super Mario 2. Some were heroic. Zelda! Your sword. And some were just plain weird. <laughs> Remember when you found out they were making a live-action Mario movie? You were excited, then confused, but hopeful. Then you saw it. <laughs> and Hollywood's pattern of ruining your childhood toys and games was confirmed. And remember the wizard? For most of us, the plot of rescuing Jimmy from the institution or why Mr. Putnam kept chasing Fred Savage was completely lost on us. All we knew is Christian Slater and his dad played a lot of Nintendo, Lucas had a power glove, and for most of us, it was the first time we saw actual footage of Super Mario Bros. 3. But even better than that, remember that epic Super Mario Bros. 3 commercial? Mario! 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 Thousands of fans chanted Mario's name. It confirmed you weren't alone. You were part of a movement. And whether you actually believed it at the time, you really were. In the years since the Nintendo Entertainment System released, it's become increasingly clear just how much it meant to those who grew up with it. Nintendo figured out a way to connect with us at the core, shaping our imaginations, sparking our creativity, inspiring millions of hours of videos and giving rise to conventions and communities of gamers who still love their NES. It really did define our childhood, forever binding our Nintendo memories with the friends and family that shared them with us. To this day, there are countless people who have a Nintendo Entertainment System in their home. But for those of us who are lucky enough to have lived it, we have it in our memories, too.